Fondation Jean Jaurès. Pensez pour agir. So the Russian invasion of Ukraine, one of the EU's closest neighbors, is a watershed moment in Europe and beyond. In addition to imposing violence on people in Ukraine, it entails a major breach of European, of regional and international orders, and often challenges uh, peace, freedom, and democracy. So a new page uh, of European history has now to be written. But while the scope and the scale of uh, the implications of, the war, of this war remain um, uncertain, it is sure that we feel, we feel the wave uh, already all in all regions in Europe, including, of course, in the Western Balkans. How does the war in Ukraine affect the, the countries of the region and the EU accession perspectives? Uh, what risks does it convey? So this is to discuss these topics that the Observatoire des Balkans and the Fondation Jean Jaurès uh, is giving the floor to key personalities from the Western Balkans to share their thoughts. My name is Florent Massiac, I'm co-director of the uh, Observatoire des Balkans at uh, the Fondation Jean Jaurès. And today I'm glad to receive um, Ditmir Bouchetti. Ditmir Bouchetti uh, was Minister for Europe and for Foreign Affairs of Albania between 2013 and 2019. He is now chairman of the board of the Adriatic uh, Security Forum. Mr. Bouchetti, uh, <laughs> welcome to you. A very simple question, but difficult answer. What are the main implications, according to you, of this war for your country and for the Western Balkans? Well, um, Albania is a NATO and EU candidate country, which has uh, a solid uh, track record in aligning the uh, foreign and security uh, policy with that of uh, European Union. As uh, part of transatlantic uh, family, um, Albania, it's clear when it comes to the um, approach for the uh, current war that it's going on after the uh, Russian's uh, invasion of, uh, of Ukraine. Um, certainly, there is uh, a, a rational fear, uh, not only in the country, but in the entire region, I, I, I suppose. Uh, how to be uh, protected from uh, Russia and how to be uh, protected from uh, a similar, uh, let's say, um, conflict, because we all believe that after the end of the uh, Cold War, uh, Russia would integrate uh, fully into the Western world. But it seems nowadays that uh, we are experiencing a more difficult uh, situation compared to that of uh, Cold War, since uh, Russia feels uh, uh, alone and it's uh, quite isolated from the democratic world. Uh, when it comes to Albania, there is, as I mentioned, more consciousness about security and freedom, uh, because those, uh, let's say, issues were um, somehow uh, taken for granted, but uh, after such uh, dramatic events uh, that are uh, going on in the eastern part of our continent, people are uh, more willing to contribute to, to contribute for the uh, security um, and to modernize also the, the 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 security the security architecture. There are also the economic dimension of this crisis. We are experiencing an increase of uh, prices, and uh, as uh, in other parts of uh, Europe, um, there there is an impact also when it comes to the food supply and to the commodities, especially uh, if one considers the uh, the oil uh, and uh, and the gas, but also. Uh, agricultural products since our, our region and Albania, it's uh, quite connected uh, with, uh, with Ukraine and also with, uh, and also with Russia. When it comes to the region, the picture is a little bit uh, mixed. Um, it's not, uh, it's not uh, as, as it is in Albania. Um, we have had countries that have uh, uh, aligned their uh, foreign and, and security position to that of European Union. Uh, but we have uh, seen also candidate countries um, that uh, took an unfortunate, let's say, stance when it comes to uh, the sanction policy against against uh, against Russia. So on one hand, uh, all six Western Balkan countries uh, are uh, condemning, let's say, the 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 Russian aggression to to uh, Ukraine. 
uh, this is being clearly demonstrated also uh, in the UN. If you see the way how uh, Western Balkan countries have uh, voted in the UN in condemning the Russian aggression. But when it comes to the uh, sanction policy, um, we have seen Serbia not joining the, 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 the club, uh, Montenegro having troubles with, uh, with, with the government uh, uh, and not going further with, with the sanction policy, and certainly, and certainly uh, Bosnia due to its uh, complicated uh, composer of the uh, governance structure. And let's not forget, Russia has been quite uh, influential in our, in our, in our neighborhood. Um, they haven't missed a chance on commenting or taking a position uh, in relation to certain developments in, 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 in the neighborhood. And they have been particularly uh, quite vocal when it comes to the so-called uh, unfinished statehood projects, such as uh, Kosovo and uh, Bosnia Herzegovina. So, uh, in this respect, it's uh, it's important also to uh, strengthen the the, the the resilient system, the democratic resilient system um, in our society and in our in our region, in order to cope with uh, the current situation. You're mentioning, thank you, you're mentioning many uh, elements, some very specific to Albania, others in the region, uh, very important strategically. Um, one of them, of course, is the role of the EU, um, which has been to shape a little bit uh, the development in the region for two decades. Now, if we look at uh, Albania more specifically, the council granted the candidate status to Albania in 2014, in 2018, the Commission issued an unconditional recommendation to open, to open accession negotiations, uh, but this recommendation has not been fully implemented yet. Um, so in the meantime, we have a revised methodology, which has been spearheaded by France, which has entered into, so into force. We have a raising discourse in the EU member states about strategic autonomy and uh, how to uh, prioritize a little bit uh, some issues in our neighborhoods. Do you think the war in Ukraine and the mounting security challenges you, you mentioned will affect the EU's enlargement policy uh, and how? I, I, I want to believe that this will, this will uh, affect also the uh, consolidation project of, of European Union because I, 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 sometimes I refuse to call it an enlargement because uh, it is mostly a consolidation project, a project that uh, started after the fall of uh, Berlin Wall back in 89, which is not uh, being completed yet as far as Western Balkan countries are not uh, part of uh, European Union. Uh, I do believe there are uh, two elements which need to be taken into account. First is uh, the ground vision uh, for Europe. Uh, we are lucky to um, have this interview while France is having the presidency of uh, European Union. Emmanuel Macron is quite notorious for um, his vision about the future of Europe. Uh, there is going to be also a conference about uh, uh, the relationship between Western Balkans and, and, and European Union. And I do hope that uh, uh, that uh, during the French EU presidency, um, we will have the opportunity uh, to discuss together the future of Europe uh, having being part of uh, European Union. So uh, not just discussing about the relationship from the security perspective uh, between uh, EU on one hand and Western Balkans on the other hand. Since the Thessaloniki agenda of 2003, we haven't uh, seen a real uh, strategic plan or uh, a vision about the future of, uh, uh, of Western Balkans. And let's not forget, we are uh, talking about the front gate of the European Union. And if European Union wants to succeed as a global player, uh, it should start to succeed first and foremost in its 
courtyard or in its front gate, which is called Western Balkans. This is my 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 first, let's say, reaction to the implication of these of these huge. Uh, uh, crisis the 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 world is facing and 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 the europe is 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 facing the second one is in relation to the interim uh interim measures uh, or the so called low low hanging fruits so you mentioned the case of uh, albania um uh, I mean, it's it's long overdue. Unfortunately, Albania it's a collateral of uh, dispute between uh, Bulgaria and 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 North Macedonia. I mean, it's maybe a rare case in the history of of, of European Union that a country is blocked because of a dispute between two other uh, countries. Uh, with both the countries, we do have a very good uh, relation uh, relations, and we would like to nurture. Uh, this relationship in the, in the future, but uh, we need some interim measures. The start of accession talks for uh, Albania, North Macedonia, visa liberalization for 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 uh, Kosovo, uh, and and blocking of the uh, EU accession process for uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. So this uh, could be a political message from uh, EU leaders to the. Uh, Western Balkan countries and societies engaging with uh, with with societies, with civil society, not only with the with the political elites, and making sure that this sense of uh, uh, belonging to the European Union, to the European project, it is really viable and it is really doable, and it's not just a question of rhetoric. And in this uh, in this sense, I would like also to end my uh, my my uh, my answer by adding also another element. We should draw some uh, conclusions and lessons also from the uh, pandemic uh, situation in the way how EU should relate or should treat Western Balkan countries. And the recent decision of the European Union to create a platform for common purchases of energy resources uh, that is open also for Western Balkan countries, it's, uh, it's a welcome development because it will strengthen also the energy resilience in, in, in our region, but also the interconnection uh, the much needed interconnection between uh, Western Balkans and European Union. Thank you. You mentioned uh, the need to to keep impetus a bit this idea and and to keep some shape this idea of belonging to Europe to make it more credible also and 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 to to make progress in this direction. Belonging to Europe is also precisely the wording of um, also in the Declaration, Joint Declaration of Versailles. Uh, consists so, uh, towards uh, the three associated countries, uh, Georgia, Ukraine, and Moldova, who have recently submitted the application for EU membership. They are pleading for a fast-track membership procedure. The member states are very, very reluctantly um, giving way to that, it seems so, um, and, but they do recognize this idea of belonging to European family. What is your take from the Western Balkans on these countries' applications for EU membership? Well, you mentioned a little bit uh, earlier also the revision of uh, enlargement methodology and uh, and the toolbox, which is uh, uh, technically speaking quite rich when it comes to the relation uh, between European Union and the prospective uh, members of um, of of EU. Uh, I think. Uh, it would be wise for European Union first to revamp the uh, Eastern Partnership uh, policy, uh, because uh, specifically in those countries, uh, European Union is, is, is facing a web of frozen conflicts, plus a kinetic uh, conflict uh, in, in, in Ukraine uh, caused by the Russian invasion. Um, which means that uh, certain policies and conventional wisdoms of the uh, Eastern Partnership policies that have been designed a decade, a decade ago by European Union are no longer are no longer uh, uh, valid. Uh, in this respect, I see uh, the political move from these three countries as. Uh, 
as a, as a, as a clear, let's say, uh, political will uh, to move towards a European Union, to embrace uh, Western values, and to uh, embrace also the EU values. And it is quite interesting to, to, to know that even in the midst of these uh, huge crises, uh, citizens in uh, those associated countries, in these three associated countries that you, that you mentioned, are eagerly uh, anticipating to join the uh, European Union. And this is uh, a sign of uh, allure about the EU project, although we are used to criticize it and we are uh, complaining about, uh, in some cases, the lack of unity and the way how the decision making in European Union is working. But on the, on the other hand, the allure of membership is, is still there. And uh, whether you call it uh, uh, a fast track procedure or uh, in, a, in, a, in a different way, uh, I'm not very optimistic that uh, any fast track procedure works uh, uh, in, in EU. Uh, but I want to remain uh, uh, optimist uh, by saying that uh, it is also in the interest of European Union to make this dream true when it comes also for those countries that have expressed their political will uh, to join the club. So not turning our back to people sharing our ideals uh, to some uh, you, you mentioned so uh, thank you very much for the impact on the security the, the challenges also in the economy and in the regional issues but what i, I very much found very marking is is, is these two elements uh, first we need uh, a strategic vision for the long term how we would like to shape our relations with the neighborhoods and also to integrate uh, in one uh, common family, but we also need short-term signals. Um, so these are these goes hand in hand. Uh, so in a very uh, uh, coming month, to keep in mind as uh, we come to closer to this conference on on um, on the future of Europe and the conference on the Western Balkans too in June. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bushati, for 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 answering these questions. Thank you. Goodbye. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Fondation Jean Jaurès. Pensez pour agir.